Lucky to beat it. 8 and 0. You see Krauss on your left and Hal Brady bringing him back on camera. He's 8 0. He is on the right. I, I like what Sean's up to here. This, this deck makes sense to me. Makes sense, and it makes sense in this meta game. Well, Brady, though, winning the die roll. He'll be on the play. Starts out with one of the scary parts of his deck. That's turn one, Elvish Mystic on Sean's side. Well, he has an Elvish Mystic of his own, but his is off Lanwar Wastes. Go back. Both players ramping out cards. It does seem like he can interact with Hal's late game, though. For sure, the Planeswalkers help a lot. He is a little light on ways to remove Mastery of the Unseen from the table. That was, that's something that would concern me. Yeah, he'll have to... I mean, in a lot of ways, he's going to have to overpower the Devotion deck, which we oftentimes have said is very difficult to do, but he's he's got a strategy which I think has a shot at it. Yeah. So turn two, Voyaging Seder on Hal's side of the board. On Sean's, he has a turn two, Courser of Crufix, revealing Garuk Apex Predator. And Sean's got a lot more mana acceleration in his hand, and he can get to that Garuk pretty fast. Question, we'll see. What can Hal get on the board? I mean, something like a turn three Whisperwood Elemental could certainly make this look... Difficult for Sean. We'll see what he ramps into. Five mana on turn three. It's just going to be a Pelucranos. I mean, still just a just Pelucranos. A, just a Pelucranos. <laughs> Enter back over to Kraus. Draw for the turn. That's going to be the copy of Garuk. And plays land for the turn. Four mana. It looks like he will have Frontier Siege. So if you want to talk about ramping into big threats, this is a huge threat for Sean. He's going to go ahead and set it to Khan, so he gets two mana at the beginning of both of his main phases. And what's so nice about this is even if Hal spends the next turn Pelucranosing away all these Elvish Mystics, that looks like a really powerful turn, Sean still gets access to, to Garak on the way back. Yeah, it's Hero's Downfall, the next card on top of Sean's library. Well, he could, he could make... He, he'd be one short, but he'd be close. If he... Unless... Can Hal kill... Hal would have to kill all the Elvish Mystics. Yeah. And that's asking a lot. I can probably kill two, but all is a lot. I mean, Sean will take a big hit here. Don't don't get me wrong. The Blue Kronos will be big, but... And the tempo swing is so bad here for Hal if he spends his whole turn using Blue Kronos. And but then the, Garuk kills Blue Kronos. Right, but the flip side is, what are you supposed to do? Just let Sean go into next turn with all that mana? He's drawing Hero's downfall? Yeah. And it's not like the damage matters. If Garuk has to kill Blue Kronos, Garuk gains the life off killing Blue Kronos. So he gains whatever damage was dealt back. So Monstrosity of X equals 2 for Pelucranos will eat two Elvish Mystics and 7 damage comes in. Sean goes down to 17. He will have 6 mana this turn. Questionably, does he have the 7th land on top of his deck? 2 mana off Frontier Siege. I mean, the Constellation Prize here is a mana creature and a downfall on the Pelucranos, which is not bad. It's not as good as playing Garrick, but this is not bad. And we see the hero's downfall on the Pelucanos, using one of the two green mana off of front, the pre-combat Frontier Siege. So still has one green floating. We see over there. Going to go ahead, go to combat. He swings with the Corsair of Crufix. That'll be two damage. Goes back in two mana post-combat. Can he spend that? Of course he can. It's going to be Elvish Mystic. And that should be enough mana for a Garuk next turn. And, and Brady's board doesn't have any any threat on it. But we'll see if he can fix that. It's going to be Genesis Hydra on five, and that's going to be a pretty good one. Top five cards shows Pelucranos, Team, and Teamer Sabretooth. And we have, I believe, Mas it's got to be Mastery of the Unseen then, too. No, Banishing Light, rather. Banishing Light's not bad, though. Uh, a problem with this line of play is that Sean does get to just play the Frontier Siege on top of his deck. It does set Sean back a turn from getting to Garrick, but it's not a long-term solution. Yeah, and depending... And what he sees, he could actually reset the Frontier Siege. He does see Swamp on top of his deck. He'll go ahead and play that. That gains him a life. And I was going to say, if he's on untapped land on top of his deck, he wouldn't even have to Frontier Siege on Khans. He could do it on Dragons. But he'll cast Frontier Siege. And this one is on Khans again. There's not a lot of synergies for Khans uh, on Dragons in Sean's list here. He's got two copies of Hornet Queen. But that's huge. That sweeps the board. Although Hornet Queen also, the, the tokens are pretty good by themselves. That's There's true. certainly a lot of upgrading. The Arch Fiend is something that can come up. I would expect this, to, this where some sieges we see, especially with uh, Outpost Siege, it getting set to both modes. Frontier Siege seems like it's nearly always on the same one. Yep. Hal, another Genesis Hydra on five. And th this could be scary for Sean to deal with. It's not even clear that Garuk will be enough at this point. It, it was looking like... You know, Sean was close to stabilizing the game. A lot of chump blockers and 
the Garrigan hand that he's close to deploying, but Hal might just overpower him before Sean can get his defenses set up. Here. Yeah, another Genesis Hydra. This one could go into Pelucranos or Mastery of the Unseen. And Cal's gonna have to make a decision as to which one he wants. It's gonna just gonna go for the fat. It'll be Pelucranos. So there is some risk with this line of play here. Sean's gonna gain some life from the Garrick. He's, Sean's got chump blockers to work with. And if Garrick gets to stay in play for a long time, you know, Cal's empty handed right now. Garrick, well, Garrick can actually take care yeah. of lots of fat creatures. Your three, your three, th and, and Radiant Found's a huge draw. This is giving Sean even a further cushion. Wow, Radiant Found. So that's it's just a one of in his deck, but really shows up at a great time. So game three. And now we see Garrick Apex Predator. So this guy's going to have to do a lot. Of, he's on a pretty big cleanup duty. Yeah, I almost wonder if... I was almost, I almost wonder here if Hal was supposed to take Master of the Unseen there with the Genesis Hydra. Because this setup feels so bad for me. You know, he's going to be starting to bang out these 3-3 three, three Death Touchers. That locks up the Genesis Hydras. Sean's now at 15. He's got a lot of life to play yeah. with. Garrick starts by minus three. He kills Pelucranos because Pelucranos can remove the blockers. And then it's going to be starting up with Death Touchers. He has just enough creatures, I think, to keep the Garrick alive. And if you swing, yep, both the Elvish Mystics are going to step in front of Genesis Hydras. They're going to protect that Planeswalker as best they can. Now the question is, what are the Hal's follow-ups? And they may, they look pretty good here. It's going to be Corsair of Crufix. And I believe another copy of Pelucranos. That might be too much for Sean to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it actually looks like it's Teamer Sabretooth, I believe. Yep. And that's pretty scary in its own right. It can start bouncing these Genesis Hydras. We saw that <laughs> happening a fair amount at GP Miami. Yeah, if the game stalls out a little bit, that's uh, something that Hal can go to. And if he had Teamer Sabretooth, then I can see not taking the Mastery of the Unseen from the earlier Genesis Hydra, because Hal already has a plan for the game stalls out and I need to do something with my mana. Has two mana, he can bounce it back, recast the Genesis Hydras, continue to get more mana. Back over to Sean's side, he makes a Death Touch Beast right there. And Sylvan Carry added. Can he protect the Gurukh long enough? Jungle Hollow gains him a life. One thing I do like about Frontier Sieges in Sean's deck as well is that they work really well with this Eidolon of Blossoms and that the Eidolon's the kind of card which wants you just to have a lot of mana, and yeah. Frontier Siege lets you do that. And we're back over to Hal's side. Master of the Unseen waits on top of his deck. He does have a Pelucranos. In hand. Sabretooth, Corsair, Hydra, Hydra in play. And he needs to get that Garuk off the board, but once he does, it looks pretty good for Brady. And here's going to be a swing. We'll confirm where it's going here. The Death Touch Beast steps in front of Teamer Sabretooth. Yeah, the, the Sabretooth takes a lot of the sting out of this one Death Touch token. Oh, he's actually thinking about that. There's, there's no, yeah, because there's no safe spot. Either the Sabretooth becomes indestructible or it bounces the thing that he blocks with the Beast. Or Sean can just trade with the Beast. He actually just reevaluates and lets, decides to let them all take down Well, Garrick. I think that he could have put the token in front of the Corsair, for example, because if Hal wants to spend mana picking that up, that's fine. Yeah, that's true. We do see Eidolon of Blossom is the draw for Sean. But that's not going to be very helpful. It goes to pre-combat mana. He can use his Khan's mana, casting Idol and Blossoms, but it's only going to draw him a carry added. Forest on top, plays Forest for the turn, gains a life. Another Forest on top, can't do anything about that one. And that's going to be his draw for next turn as well. And if that's his next turn draw, I, I, don't, see, I don't see him surviving. No. There's just so much resiliency in this green-white deck right now. Well, I think Sean probably survives this turn because he's got a lot of Hexproof Shunt Blockers, but the next turn, I, yeah. think Hal, I think Hal has lethal. And there aren't cards like Crux of Fate or Straight. I guess the, the sweeper is Ugin. Sean could, if Sean could work his way up to Ugin, he could get rid of everything here. Granted, Hal could bounce it all back to his own hand. Yeah. The Sabretooth, just a one of here, but very potent to find off of Genesis Hydras when you have access to all the mana in your entire deck and also good in spots like this where you have a lot of mana to work with and you just need something to do while you're trying to attrition out your opponent. Mastery of the Unseen plays a similar role 
and uh, Sabretooth does that too. And we see Chumps in front of the two Hydras. Pelucranos getting blocked by the Death Touch Beast. And Sabretooth getting in there. That's on the attack. So four damage showing up right now. And it looks like before that Death Touch is going to happen, Pelucranos might just eat a whole bunch of creatures. Yeah, might as well just get the other stuff that Sean has left in play. Yep, it'll take care of the Courser. Gets bigger, gets a token, trades with the Death Toucher. Four damage across, puts Sean down to 14. Pelucanos trades with the Death Touch Beast. The Genesis Hydras eat the Sylvan Caryatids. And now just an idle on a Blossoms and Outpost Siege in play for Sean. He draws Forest for the turn, plays it. And the draw was Mastery of the Unseen for Hal. And he has 16 power in play. Yeah, this is a lethal attack, I'm fairly sure. Oh, there's an Eidolon. It can jump. Yeah, and I think there's still it's, it's, Oh, 14. there's all the there's mana creatures yeah. on the side. Yeah, it's still lethal. So all game one over to Hal Brady. All the little dorks still can, can attack their You forget their creatures sometimes. They're yep. just little mana guys. But game one over to Greenway, to Potion, and to Hal Brady. So going for that 9-0 spot, still have yet to see this deck get taken down. Yeah, been been really impressive. It looks so good in Miami, and uh, I've seen surprising little, surprisingly little of it so far in Dallas. We've seen surprisingly little of it, but uh, Hal Brady looking at potentially being one of our last, if not our last, 9-0 going into the next day. All right, so start on sideboards, looking at Sean Krause's sideboard. It looks like he got has a lot in the main deck for the matchup, but can he do even more? He does. He's got an Archfiend Depravity, two copies of Nissa World Waker, and our Reclamation Sage, three copies of Bioblight, two Drown Sorrow, three Thoughtseize, three Read the Bones. Definitely like bringing in the other Archfiend. I like bringing in the three copies of Thoughtseize. I think a lot of the, the remaining removal is a little mopey. I think Drown and Sorrow is probably only for matchups where it's lights out because it kills a lot of Sean's stuff too. So probably not coming in this matchup. I think the one Reclamation Sage is fine to bring in as well. A lot of enchantments in house deck. Yeah, Mastery of the Unseen among them. Also, Corsair of Crufix probably is good enough. On Hal Brady's side, he actually gets to bring in his own Reclamation Sages. Once again, he's playing against Constellation, so that seems pretty solid. Uh, this is actually one of the matchups where I would expect him to bring in also his copy of Satessan Tactics. Yeah, Sean's got a lot of mana creatures as well, a lot of small stuff. The board can bog up a little bit, like we saw that game, and Satessan Tactics is generally powerful. Now, outside of that, the cards like Nissa World Waker, Fleece Mainline, Valorous Stance. I'm not sure how it wants any of them in the matchup. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Valorous Dance is so flexible that it's rare that you're wrong for bringing it in, but it doesn't seem like a particularly good matchup for it. Yeah, so as these players, they're still signing on to Game 2. We were talking a little bit about some of the books that we currently have available on Star City Games. One of them, we talked about the Commander's Arsenal. This is one of the ebooks we've had. This is written by Benny Smith, a longtime author on the website. Our, the Complete Commander, rather, the unofficial guide, is updated for Commander 2014. You may have already read it, but you can read more about it on StarCityGames.com slash Complete Commander. And I know Benny Smith, someone who's been writing a long time in the community. Yeah, someone who's been a, you know, sort of a centerpiece of the casual community for a very long time, a writer for Star City Games also for a very long time, former Virginia State champion and very passionate about Commander. Again, available with the complete Commander here, updated for Commander 2014, available on PDF at starcitygames.com slash complete Commander. Looking at, so, going into the game matchup, we did say game one, it looks like a decent matchup for Kraus. I, the, neither player seems to have a great plan for their sideboard. Not really. I mean, Sean's deck is already coming equipped game one uh, about to the extent that a deck realistically can against Green White Devotion. And Hal's deck is so linear that the sideboard does, often does not offer you some great options. You know, you have Nissa for control matchups. You have Fleece Main Lion also for, you know, and hostility style matchups and for beatdown matchups where you just need an early blocker. But by and large, the Green White Devotion, most of its power, most of what it's doing is about its composition in game one. Not to say it gets bad during sideboarding, it's just most of what the deck's up to you see in the 60 cards. Yeah, and, and even though it, I still, it seems like a matchup that Sean can win. Um, but yeah, it was overpowered, at least in that game, just by Genesis Hydra, I think, showing off yet again. Exactly. He just got two for one too many times. I like his matchup here. I, I do think that Sean's got a lot of really good tools. They just, uh, Hal's deck, Hal's draw, rather, that game was just so good. Yeah, once you get, I think that the addition of thought seizes out of the sideboard should help him here. Yeah, if he can, if he can weather the storm of some of his big plays, if he can strip them out of the hand before they show up, or if he can have spot removal for Pelucranos, the the turn that it shows up, Sean's got a lot 
you know, his deck's a lot less predicated on the board looking particular ways. It's a lot less fidgety. He just has big stuff that works on its own. So if he's able to hold off Hal's explosive overpowering plays, I think in a, in a straight fight, Sean's got an edge. Yeah. Sean will get to be on the play here for game two as well. These are actually the last two players undefeated at 8-0. So this will be for the crown of being the only 9-0 player entering day two. And for Hal, a real credit to his pace of play because we saw at Grand Prix Miami, this deck can take a very long time to play. A lot of players got quite a few intentional draws, or excuse me, unintentional draws, rather. And Hal at 8-0, playing a very fast pace. I have not seen him very take these turns that take forever. He's not overthinking it. He's playing at a brisk pace, which is really important if you're going to pick this deck up. Moving through to checking sideboards one other time here. And we do see how, with some of his own updates to the list as well, playing a copy of Soul of Theros, that was Craig talked about as, pos as possible mirror breaker of a card. Not yeah. something that was standard in the GP Miami list. I think that if you want to, you know, really win the mirror, you have to go to something really, really powerful, something like in Garrick's Wake, which this deck can pretty easy facilitate, I feel like. I, I like Erebos, too. I think it's a deck where sure. you can... Just Erebos is pretty good against them anyway. They're not really pressuring you very much. You have some time. And shutting off the life gain element means that... You have to add black right, though, right? For the, the green-white deck. Well, the deck's already playing four copies of Corsair Crufix, and you have a Blossoming Sands. The Blossoming Sands could easily be, become a Sandstep Citadel. That's, or, that's, or an Urborg. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, and, and when you're playing the mirror match, the enti your entire deck is on the table at a certain point, so it's not hard to facilitate these kind of splashes, even for ambitious cards. All right, well, underway. Sean's the first one with a mana creature in play. His is Sylvan Carry added. Hal will match it with a Voyaging Seder of his own, so both players ramping up. We'll see what they ramp into, though, as that will be of utmost importance here. Back on Hal's side, land does have another land, and it will be Bioblight to take down the mana creature. Looks like, looking like he will follow it up with a, another Sylvan Carry added of his own. Yeah, I was interested to see if he was going to bring these in. They are very good early on, but later on, they're quite bad. Sean has it at the right moment right now. Bioblight and Sylvan Carry added. So Sean threatening a lot to leverage a large mana advantage over Hal here. He'll scry for the turn. And looks like play Master of the Unseen, but now three to six. We'll see what, man, what card Sean can get into play, but he certainly is ahead. Looks like it's just mana, or a lot of lands rather in Sean's hand. We'll see if he has some sort of big play. Yeah, he has a Drown in Sorrow, but I don't know if he has a finisher. He does need one. That Master of the scene, Unseen on Hal's side can do a lot of damage if the game stalls out. I guess Sean does, he, he does have the Drown in Sorrow, so he has time. Well, the problem is that the Mastery can just, if it happens to find something big initially, then your Drown in Sorrow is not very effective anymore. Sure. Eventually it'll find something like we've seen Sean, Hal flip coursers and whisper wood elementals off it already. It's a lot of big creatures in the deck. It's only a matter of time before they find one of them. And he looks like he does have a card to follow up with. And this is Archfiend of Deprav Depravity. So this guy, pretty effective against the Screenwave Devotion strategy. Hal missing his fourth lander up as well. So at the beginning, at the end of each player's turn, they play choose up to two creatures and have to sacrifice the rest of them on top of that he's a 5-4 flyer yeah so it does a very good job of playing catch up when your opponent's done a lot uh, of mastery on seeing and so forth and also five power flyer is pretty naturally good against green white devotion and how with one of his few answers it's one of his two copies of banishing light that will take care of the archfiend so so far so good for hal he dodging that bullet and then he plays a pelucranos of his own See if Sean can find a way to get rid of that Banishing Light or find another Archfiend. But right now, it looks like he is all lands. Plays a third copy of Sylvan Carry added. And Hal has recovered from his initial mana stumbles and is now just a handful of spells. Yeah, plays Whisperwood Elemental, swings with Pelucanos. Pelucanos takes down a Sylvan Carry added. Draw for Sean. Looks to be more mana. That one's a Nykthos. And a great, what Sean's hand, very powerful initially. A lot of mana ramp. He had one big payoff spell, but it was a hand that really could, could be done in by a card like Banishing Light, and it looks like that's what's playing out. Well, he still has a draw to something like Ugin. That would help him quite a bit here. Garrick's Yeah, not, that'd be great. Garrick's not necessarily bad here, but he's running out of time. The Scream White Devotion deck, uncontested, can kill very quickly. Yep, and you see swings here from creatures, and Sean knows how quick it can happen. He's going to put 
Sylvan Carey added in front of Pelucranos takes six. Four from the Whispered Elemental, two from the Manifest. And he's going to need something this turn. It's probably an, uh, an Ugin. I believe he drew Bio Blight, which won't help. Even Ugin would only do so much in the face of these Manifest tokens. Uh, Drown and Sorrow will be his play. Sure, I Could guess. Could do a lot worse. Yeah. yeah. It's not getting much better. And that'll work. That'll take care of both the both the manifests. They were a forest and a windswept teeth. It also takes care of an elvish mystic. I think Sean as much wants to get the scry one out of it. Well, black <laughs> a temple of malady that will certainly go to the bottom. And his secondary play that's going to be Doomwake Giant. It will do one more. So that, yeah, that'll take care of the Sylvan Carry added as well. Okay, not a shabby turn. I mean, given that Sean's tools are not very powerful right now, that's about as much as you could ask for. Hal on end step will start the manifesto again though. And Mastery of the Unseen activated. So go back over. And it's going to be Reclamation Sage taking care of the Doomwake Giant. That's a huge game. And here comes the whole army. Pelucranos, Whisperwood, and the Manifest token. And the last jump block made. Carry added steps in front of Pelucranos. The Sean takes six, goes down to nine. That should bring him to his last draw. Might be Ugin or Bust. We'll see if he can get it. And <laughs> he may have just done it. Looks like he was drawn, was ready to flip it and concede, and now he goes back to thinking. Yeah, I believe the draw step was Garrick, which is still not great here, because the best thing that Sean can do, I think, is just kill is. something. Yeah. And I think he still dies on the way back. Garrick, a good draw, could needed it earlier, but we'll do something at gain. Takes care of Pelucranos, and he gains five, so Sean will go up to 14. Maybe at bottom a turn. Yeah, it looks like it, it looks like it's worth about a turn. But it's getting more and more dangerous because the possible draw of Ugin is becoming less and less good here. Yeah, I mean, how could just pass the turn, activate Mastery of the Unseen, and Ugin does very little. And there's also a Whisperwood Elemental to boot, so he has lethal through Ugin next turn because the manifest yeah. tokens don't go anywhere. Sean down to six. His draw is Idle on a Blossoms. That'll be one more card. Looks like it's a Drown in Sorrow. Which doesn't work here because he can still activate Mastery of the Unseen Attack with Whistlewood Elemental. Yes, still six damage. And it looks like Sean knows it. And he'll go ahead and cast the Drown in Sorrow. Gonna make Hal go through it. Looks like Hal has something to unmorph as well. It's going to flip up Corsair of Crufix. That does it too. This I, I, either way, it works. And there you have it. Two games, Hal Brady make winning in a commanding fashion. And he is your leader after day one, the only player at 9 0. He'll enter as a pretty strong favorite tomorrow. Back to back, very impressive performances here for Green White Devotion. And I'm interested to see what the metagame is going to look like in Richmond. We still have a lot of magic left to play in Dallas this weekend. But uh, right now, it's looking like the most powerful deck in standard has been very impressive the thing that's impressed me the most is its ability to be fluid in its roles it can be aggressive it can play the attrition game it can play the you know go crazy with nick those game just very very flexible yeah mastery mastery of the unseen a great addition for the devotion deck and we have definitely seen that play out today yeah 